Thousands of miles away, the troops the Pentagon has deployed are putting their lives at risk. Where's that the fire coming from? And for the first time since World War II, a young pilot searches for enemies in the skies above the Pentagon. They reckon with the war in Afghanistan, one of the front lines in the global war on terrorism. The war the Pentagon is fighting is mostly an unconventional war. Special operations forces, small teams of highly trained, heavily equipped fighters were among the first to be flown in. Their job was to lay the groundwork for airstrikes and to organize the Afghan resistance. The basic unit that does that is a Special Forces A team. Um, there's 12 members on the team. The new strategy must confront a constant from all battles past, the fog of war. Combat is a chaotic affair, and commanders don't necessarily know what is happening until after the smoke is cleared. A friend of mine used to compare that, that fog of battle to playing a chess game. You know, literally in a fog where you not only can see very few of the opponent's chess pieces, but you can't even see all your own chess pieces. Now, as the Pentagon is pushing hard to transform 21st century warfare, stunning new technology may sweep away some of that fog for the first time in history. Night vision goggles allow soldiers to see more than 150 yards under nothing but starlight. High-powered weapons with the ability to hit a target from great distances are becoming the rule, not the exception. Even with military might unmatched anywhere in the world, no one is underestimating the task. The Pentagon has no more important mission than supporting the troops. Providing them with good training and sophisticated equipment has always been critical. But it is especially true now, as the military's mandate evolves with the times. The United States military is preparing for the entire range of conflict, from peacekeeping to nuclear warfare, across the entire range of climates, and across the entire range of cultures. It is a very large military, really trying to be all things to all people, and doing it pretty successfully. Many of the men and women who make up the American military refer to themselves as warriors. They are an essential element in the defense equation of the United States. The U.S. military approach classically has been overwhelming force, overwhelming destructive power brought to bear against the enemy. But the young fighters the Pentagon deploys need discipline as well as firepower. In the modern military, they can be asked to keep the peace as well as to wage war. It is a duty that may not come naturally. Remember, we train a soldier, as brutal as it sounds, is to kill, to use force violently. You have taken an 18-year-old in whom you have drilled in that when you come to a point of resistance, you hit with all the violence at your disposal to get through that resistance. The human factor in war will remain unpredictable. But the Pentagon is always looking for ways to increase the odds in its favor. It's a process fraught with both pitfalls and promise. In its time, the Pentagon has experienced both triumph and disaster. Some 30 years earlier, it was rocked by a very different war than the one that is waging now. No era was more difficult or damaging than Vietnam. The after effects are still being felt. Vietnam was like nothing the Pentagon had ever encountered. What had begun as an effort to stop the spread of communism became a trap 
from which there seemed no escape. American officers felt enormous pressure to succeed, which led to frustration and ultimately a great deal of deception. The war dragged on and on, taking the Pentagon down with it. Some in the once proud defense establishment felt betrayed by an administration that seemed unable to extricate itself from the nightmare. The basic belief that seems to be pervasive in the U.S. military is that civilians meddled in the Vietnam War, that the lesson of Vietnam was that the politicians got too involved in the basic decisions about the war. Outside the Pentagon, public fury was increasing. The protests reached right up to the walls of the building itself. There was disillusionment within the ranks as well. Those might to some sound like harsh words. But at some point, the leadership of our country understood perfectly clearly that this war could not be won in Vietnam. And yet they continue to send in young men and women to die and went to bed at night and slept well. And I hope to God we never do this again. And I think everyone who is a civilian leader whose job it is to send young men and women into harm's way better look themselves in the mirror every night and say, have I sent them knowing that they cannot win? That they're going there for naught. And I think in this country this occurred. In 1975, when it all finally ended, the credibility of the Pentagon was in tatters. The Pentagon sends troops where it is told to. In 1992, it was ordered to deploy forces to Somalia on a humanitarian mission. Initially, there seemed little risk. Over the months, the situation deteriorated and tensions grew. Then it exploded. And so when a firefight developed, during which tragically 18 Americans were killed and a large number were wounded, when that fight came, it was such a shock to the public. In the tragic Black Hawk incident, Somalis brought down two helicopters and the rescue mission went drastically amiss. The nation and the Pentagon reeled. General John Shalikashvili was sworn in as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff just weeks after the Black Hawk incident. He inherited a nightmare. I think what went tragically wrong has haunted us really quite a bit ever since, was that we went to Somalia having explained very clearly to the American public why we were going and what we intended to do there. But then, as always in a military operation, things change. Nothing is ever static, and just because you made a plan doesn't mean that the plan is going to be carried out like this. Somalia brought back memories of failure and tragedy in Vietnam. All right, let's mount it up! The Pentagon was created to deal with one of the most terrible expressions of the human race, war. Its success or failure, however measured, can affect the future of nearly every country on the planet. Fear it, respect it, look to it for protection, or desire its destruction. Much rests on this stolid, serious place, a grave and simple building called the Pentagon.